Hi everyone! In today's hair video, I'll be trying to recreate a look worn by Lagertha in the last season of Vikings. I'm doing this in pieces, and I'm going to start with the headgear. I'll be using a pair of chain nose pliers, wire cutters, nylon jaw pliers, and gold tone 16 gauge wire. I'll also be using a glue gun and glue sticks, along with some burgundy ribbon that's about an inch wide. I've got a sewing needle and some clear nylon thread too, and a spool of stiff copper embroidery thread. For the embellishment, I've got a sizable green gold bead for the tiara, and I'm also using two sets of three different kinds of pink and gold beads for the circlet in the back. And last but not least, I've got a small box of cotton strips. This stuff is great for beauty projects too, so I'll link to where I bought it in the underbar. I'll start with the circlet. I unspooled some wire, straightened it out with the nylon jaw pliers, and cut a piece that I measured around the back of my own head. I did this off screen, and the reason I'm not presenting measurements is because the space there will probably be different for everyone. You'll likely just have to experiment with what'll suit you. After I had the right amount for me, I bent it into an oval and used another piece of cut wire to secure the rounded shape. The frame is now in place and ready to go. Moving forward, I put down a magazine to protect my work surface, plugged in my hot glue gun, and pulled out a sizable strip of the cotton. The objective here is to glue the strip all the way around the circlet. It'll be up to you how tightly you want to wrap it. If you do it loosely, it'll end up appearing fuller than if you were to wind it around more tightly. I tried to stretch mine somewhere in the middle so that the final piece would still show through my fine hair, as opposed to overwhelm it or look bulky. Obviously, the cotton is meant to act like a stuffing between the wire and the ribbon, and it's kind of perfect in the sense that it's super light and won't feel heavy on the head later. When it came to the ribbon portion, I kept up with the hot glue gun, but you can also sew if you prefer. I think it just depends on how much time you want to spend on the headdress. I chose a pretty simple, solid color colored ribbon, but it might look even more detailed if you were to use something with a pattern too. I can actually imagine that depending on the materials you select, this might be an accessory that you can use for several different kinds of cosplays, including Renaissance costumes. Again, it totally depends on how you want your completed circlet to end up, but when it came to decorating, I chose simple beads. The first three were these gold and pink flowers, and then I interchanged with copper crystal style bracelet beads. I'm also working with a clear nylon thread, and that's just because I'm not the best seamstress, and it's probably better if my stitches don't show. Now I'm going to tackle the small tiara. Going back to the 16 gauge wire, I measured a piece that was 14 inches long. Again, I did this by holding it up to my head off screen, and that's what worked for me. Depending on your own head shape, you might find that yours needs to be a little longer or shorter. Using a sharpie, I marked a line 3 inches back from each end. I'll still be using the cotton strips to create the cushion, but I'm only going to wrap it around the section in the center of these lines. My idea here is that the tiara will appear full in the center while tapering off on the ends, and by doing that, the sides of the crown will end up being easier to tuck under my hair during styling. Again, I'm using the same burgundy ribbon. To keep it even and interesting, I started on one end by wrapping and gluing my way up the wire and then over onto the cotton until I reached the center. And then, with another bit of ribbon, I covered the other side, gluing it all the way into the middle where the two pieces eventually met. The embellishment that I chose was the closest I could find to the centerpiece in Lagertha's crown. Hers doesn't appear to have a green stone, or any stone at all for that matter, but I thought this had a similar enough shape. Luckily, it happened to have a scalloped edge all the way around, and this made it incredibly easy to sew on, since I could pass the needle in and out. I also took advantage of this particular bead shape again when I began using my copper-colored embroidery thread. I weaved it through, knotted the end, and wrapped it around the crown itself. I also doubled back so that the thread would look crisscrossed and more intricate. Now I'm finally at the stage during which I can pull all my hair up and incorporate these headpieces. I started my prep by microcrimping all the hair on my head. This isn't at all a necessary step, but because I don't have three feet of thick natural hair, I thought that extra volume might help in building the illusion. The first section was made on my left side, and it was a vertical line that ran from my center parting down. I clipped back the side and then divvied out a small section at my ear, which I'm also pulling out of the way for now. This starts off as a French, which means the hair is added into both sides of the braid and the strands are folded over one another. But as I came to the round of my head, the section tapered, and so I switched to a lace braid, meaning I only brought additional hair into the strand nearest the face. I'm going to fast forward here, but you'll obviously need to repeat these steps on the other side for symmetry's sake. The next set of braids are going to be a little different. Here I'm making another vertical line, but this time I'm switching to a Dutch lace braid. And I'm working from the hair at my ear up to the parting at the top of my head. 
This means that the strands are bent under each other and the hair is only gathered into a single strand, which in this demo is still the one nearest my face. As always, I'll link my braid dictionary in case you need further explanations or just a refresher on these techniques. And quick tip, if you find some of your layers are going to stick out and make shred, spray them down with some hairspray and while the ends are still wet from the product, continue the braid and that should alleviate some of those prickly ends. Once again, I'm going to whiz forward, but like before, these steps have to be done on the other side as well. Now I'm going to begin securing all the stuff in the back, and so the next section is made in the style of a half ponytail. I don't personally feel that the lines need to be perfect here, but it definitely helps to get them as straight as possible. I'm also keeping in theme with the last two braids, in that this is also a dutch lace, and this time it'll extend from the right side all the way through the entire panel over the head like a headband until it finally comes to rest on the left shoulder. Moving forward, I split the remaining hair into two pieces just as I would if I were making pigtails, and for now I'm working on the right side first. Starting at the very top, I picked up a small bit of hair, broke it down into three, and began yet another dutch lace. But this one's a little different because I'm not moving it horizontally across my head. Rather, it's being built at a vertical angle in a somewhat straightish line. I'm still adding into the strand nearest the face, and the hair I'm using is coming from directly behind the headband braid. Lace braids are terrific in that they provide you with a totally free edge on one side, and I plan on using this a little later on. I still have a whole section of loose hair on the right, which is exactly what I need and plan for, another reason for the lace braid. For now, I've quartered off a small portion of this at the top and I'm making a very simple three strand braid, definitely the easiest thus far. And like before, everything I've done on the right has to be done on the left as well. I swear, I tried really hard to plan for this style without extensions, but there just wasn't any way. So here I've got two two-clip wefts of hair. I'm going to double these up by inserting them, one on top of the other, right between the upside-down braids and the headband. Once they were in, I rolled them around my hand into a large barrel curl of sorts and stuck in a few pins to keep the shape. The tiara came in next and I put it onto my head right behind the very first two braids I made. Black Earth is up to has a ton of height right behind the crown, so to try and recreate this I did my best to pin those two upside down lace braids sideways. Honestly I think it would have been more successful if I'd sewn them together first, but at this point I was just eager to finish and see how it was going to turn out. I will say that the barrel curl at the crown acted as a great cushion, and I was definitely able to lean things against that. I followed up with the braids at the front of my face too by pinning them back with a series of traditional closed and open pins. I have to imagine that in this case, the longer your hair is, the easier it'll ultimately be if you try this out. Had my hair been just 3 or 4 inches longer, I might have been able to zigzag them back and forth more than twice. Again, I needed that extra volume and so I have another 4 two-clip wefts of hair. Remember, there's still some loose stuff in the back behind the vertical dutch lace and below those two plain three strands. The hair gets clipped in, two on each side under the dutch at an angle. My idea was that the clips would be hidden in that pocket beneath the braid, but that only sort of worked out. I think I overestimated how much space I actually have on the back of my own head. But, but no matter, because everything will be covered in the end. This is definitely my favorite part of the up style, and it's also a good place to be creative. The circlet has no means of attaching itself into the hair, so I just rested it on top of the barrel curl, leaned my head forward so it wouldn't fall, and used the two largest braids in the back to hold it in place. I brought them up and over the headdress and pinned them, and this automatically secured my costume piece. Remember, all it is is a bit of cotton and ribbon, so it's actually super light and pliable, and not nearly as tricky to insert into the hair as you might initially think. And from there I just went with it by moving things around, pinning and tucking ends into and under things, until everything was off my neck. I call these kinds of updos braid collages, because that's what they've always appeared to look like to me. Besides crown braids, these are my second favorite kinds of styles, because even if your initial layout is always the same, the result will vary every time. The only real plan I had were those spaces and extension clips. I actively worked to cover them up and keep them from showing. And with that last pin, my cosplay hair was completed. I hope you all enjoyed my video for today. If you did, throw me a thumbs up or leave any feedback in the comments below, because when you do, it really helps me out. I'd love to see your images, so tag me on Instagram, Facebook, or Snapchat. I'll leave my social media links below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, have fun and keep braiding. Bye!